every Overwatch League franchise has certain appeals to it. We all have our reasons for supporting the teams that we do. There's things that we wouldn't change for the world, if at all possible. But deep down, we all know that we can never truly be satisfied. There's always going to be something more that can be done to improve. And that's what we're set out to accomplish in today's video. Here is one thing that I would change about every OWL team. Atlanta Rain. Okay, so this thing maybe doesn't apply to them in the current day, maybe more so in the future after the season, but I'd love to eventually see them get a more well-rounded tank player that can play everything so they don't have to swap between between two people all the time. Obviously, they're not going to need something like this in the present to win a title. They're still the best team in the league. It just makes sense to maybe think about this. A star tank to keep the flip-flopping at a minimum could make them even more stable than they already are. Obviously, I'm nitpicking here, but we had to go with something, and this is what I picked. Boston Uprising. Get a more true flex DPS. Find somebody who can do the May and projectile stuff better than Decay could. While true that Decay has been a staple of Boston this year, in arguably their most valuable player, it's mostly come on that Tracer. If Tracer happens to go away out of the blue, then Boston would probably benefit from another flex DPS on the roster because Decay does not have the most ideal hero pool. I'm not saying to abandon Decay or anything, I just think you have to keep his strengths and weaknesses in mind in case we are in a situation where a lot of his weaknesses come to the forefront. Having a rotation so it's less likely that you get exposed could be very important for Boston. It could be a small thing here in the present because Tracer is so relevant, but in the future, maybe this is something that could really impact them, and you don't want to risk it with a team of this caliber, the Dallas Fuel. It's time to add a third DPS. Sparkle and Edison are good, but obviously far from perfect. There are certain metas where they just can't give you everything they have. Sombra, for example, has been a glaring hole, and that's where having your Doha kind of player ends up really benefiting you. You don't need him all the time out there, but he is reliable and fills out those couple of needs that complete your team. It really doesn't hurt to have that extra spark plug, especially with how Dallas have performed. There's been moments throughout this year where Edison and Sparkle have just felt a little flat. Breathing some new energy into your damage line could make Dallas finish this season on a very strong note and potentially get back into that playoff conversation. The Florida Mayhem. DPS depth is the thing that I want to see Florida address. I love Checkmate and Merit to death and I think they do almost everything exceptionally well, but having that dedicated guy for the couple of things they lack could end up helping. Sauna so far has proven to not be that guy, and he could be on his way out at least according to rumors. They just need a better option that can actually play for them. Eliminating those May struggles amongst a couple of other minor things could help Florida improve upon their rush comps. They just need that slight boost in versatility so they can get their consistency where it needs to be to become more competitive. Guangzhou Charge. How about adding a second tank? Piggy is someone that I absolutely adore, but he can't play everything. That is very obvious. Sometimes they have to fall back on some of his comfort picks because he's not that good on the other things that are meta, and it doesn't work very well in their favor. They clearly don't have any interest whatsoever in playing Ramatra, and their Winston comp is pretty up and down. And these are the two most important heroes in the current meta, and that's why I think it's time to make a change. Have somebody else that can show Shoulder these burdens so Piggy can focus more on the stuff that he is good at. A lot of the big tank options are currently off the market, but there still are a couple. In particular, I think that Muse wouldn't be a bad choice at all. He's looked pretty solid on Poker Face, and he completely fills in the two biggest needs of the team. He's not a perfect situation to have, but in the short term, he helps the charge in the best way possible. Hongzhou Spark. It is time to get another tank player. You already ditched 20 last week, so you've already won half the battle right there. And you've shown that you are willing to bring in other people with that strange addition of pineapple, so you might as well get somebody of use while you're at it. Spark need more flexibility, no ifs, ands, or buts. With how poor they have looked using 20, they mostly felt limited to Winston comps only. Gooshway's hero pool is sadly not that versatile. He can't play any off tank whatsoever, and his rush heroes are not the best. Spark with more tank flexibility would be in a noticeably better position, not only in this meta, but in future ones as well. The better help they have at tank, the less likely it'll be on just the DPS to win them games. 
The Houston Outlaws. Maybe you could add another DPS? Outlaws are a very complete team, much like the Atlanta Reign. You could maybe, I'd say, add in another DPS just to fill in any of the small holes between Happy and Pelican. Not that there are much of those, which mind you, I really don't think they could do, but I'm sure there are situations where maybe it could be helpful. Pelican Sombra was hit or miss, and maybe it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world to have somebody on hand for like a double hit scan or sniper-centric meta alongside Happy. Alternatively, you could get someone a bit stronger on the Tracer than these too. I'm pretty much nitpicking at this point, but there's not much that you'd like to change about Houston. Maybe you could also change their colors, I guess, so they don't look like contender skins, but I don't really know, man. Houston are very likable. London Spitfire. Either add a new tank or bare minimum find a replacement at DPS or flex support. London need a legit second tank option who can like play the Sigma and the Ramatra and the Diva. Hadi has been a lot more limiting compared to last year, and if you aren't going to fully invest in his comfort picks, then you need another reliable leader. You gotta look towards contenders if you're the London Spitfire. Look towards NA. And the same could be said for either support or DPS. The subs have done absolutely nothing to elevate London. Lethal's Tracer has been amongst one of the worst in the league, and Skyripa dies way too often. You have to find some kind of replacement. You can pick the position, I guarantee you it'll make a difference. London are severely lacking with their hero coverage, and they need additional help. It's either that, or you go all in on your hottie comps. Those are the only chances you have of getting back into the playoff race before it is too late. LA Gladiators. It's time to bring back your old colors. They address the tank problem, so I'm pivoting to quite possibly my biggest problem with them. They're Overwatch 2 skins. Whose idea was it to replace that sleek, dark purple, and black design with this pink nonsense? These skins look like they're trying to do way too much. There is a lot going on, and I just don't find it pleasing to the eye. Like, I don't know what to focus on. The consensus on these skins are pretty mixed from what I can tell, but I'm firmly in the I don't like them camp. Some heroes look less annoying than others, but generally, they just didn't need to change in the first place. And the away skins might be even even worse. Are you like trying to be some kind of cheap imitation of the spark or mayhem? Where's the gladiator's purple on this thing? The gladiator's purple and black is one of the most iconic colorways. This change makes no sense and I just want to see my old colors back. LA Valiant. Add another playmaker to help out Seeker. Seems like an obvious request, right? It's obviously not gonna come true given their budget situation, but a man can definitely dream cause holy moly, Valiant might actually have a chance of winning a game if they had a lick of consistent playmaking outside of Seeker. Seeker has looked like a genuine all-star for this team and his performances have meant absolutely nothing because they suck. Getting a third DPS and finding yourself that other carry just might be enough to win you something. Also, as a side thing, I'm beating a dead horse here, but please change your colors. That blue and yellow was always a terrible idea. You look way too similar to Boston. It doesn't even look that good. And going back to the green just makes a lot more sense. As a former Valiant fan, I am still salty about these changes to this day, and I will not rest until this agenda comes into fruition. NYXL figure out your support situation. You have multiple supports on this team, but you play Fitz on break. It's time to make a move. Either try playing one of these people again, or what you do is you move them over to your academy team and pick up another support that you'd actually consider using. Someone who can help in like a double flex support meta and play that break. Get your skewed from LA Gladiators type of player, and NYXL could be a lot more stable, and then Fitz can focus more on what he's best at. San Francisco Shock. It's time to either get a new main support or a third DPS. At least according to the rumors, the Shock are apparently already on both of these things. I'm not going to go too into detail since nothing's official yet, but these are obviously the things that the Shock need to address, as so far, Proper has gotten little to no help this year in that playmaking department. Sometimes he's saying looks okay, but he's mostly been a disappointment. Meanwhile, the support line has essentially been lifeless and kind of a liability. 
Vindame and Finn have surprisingly been a pretty terrible combo despite working together on O2 Blast. They don't synergize very well at the Overwatch League level, and the death rate and decision making has been questionable to say the least. Either ditching what they have, or getting another option to form some kind of rotation could really freshen up the Shock's mindset and give them a new breath of life. The Soul Dynasty. It's time to get a new support player. Either you pick up a new main support and you get Krillin out of there, or you get Lee Su Min out of there, slide Krillin over to flex support, and then add a new main support. No matter what the decision ends up being, backline has been very lacking for the Dynasty this year, and they need some kind of boost. Rumor has it that the Shock are gonna ditch Findame, and the Dynasty did find success with him last year, so this might be a pretty ideal signing for them. They just have to get some kind of new support to give them a little bit more firepower, I think it could make the Dynasty a lot more respectable, and could maybe save their season. And if that were to be off the table, Dynasty just need to play more around Void, I feel. Look at what Dallas are doing with Hanbin. Play around the picks that enable your star tank player the best. This Bellows Rhea experiment has not worked out in their favor. They just have a higher rate of success with Void in the starting lineup. Don't be a slave to what the meta is. Increase your chances of winning and turn your season around while there's still time. Soul Infernal. Maybe an unpopular opinion, but I'd love to see them bring back the orange. Soul Inferno look fine how they are. I'm not gonna lie to you, I think that red-black with that small bit of gold is pretty clean, but the league does have a lot of red teams. We need more unique colorways, you know? We don't have any primary orange teams these days because Chengdu are gone and Philly rebranded. We don't have any of that stuff. And if that's not an option, maybe you add a sixth player to join the squad. As good as this unit has been, five players leaves little margin for error, and I think that a 6 guy to fill in any holes at like support or tank could be enough to really lock up first place in the East no matter what ends up coming their way in the second half of 2023. The Shanghai Dragons. Get. More. Playmakers. You already took that first big step by replacing Fleta with Fate, but you've got to do a bit more if you want to get over the hump. This can't be all that you do. Fate, while reliable, does not add a ton of that explosiveness that you need. You're still really lacking in this type of area outside of your damage line. Having another tank option, or maybe even a better main support than Gangnam Jin, could make the dragons move in a seriously positive direction compared to what we saw in Half 1. Much like the Dynasty, I feel that a couple of desperation moves are exactly what the dragons need to be competitive. The Toronto Defiant. Given all the drastic changes they made a couple of weeks ago, I'd say that they should try and complete their flexibility with a second tank player. Kaluch has maybe struggled a bit, both on the Winston and Ramatra mechanically. Sometimes he can't quite move up to par. If you can maybe get a guy who can take care of at least one of these issues, that could make Toronto very well-rounded. I possess high hopes that Kaluge is going to play a lot better now that the team around him went through some needed change. He's a pretty special player who knows what he's doing, but it definitely does not hurt to have other options, especially when your team hasn't played the best. The Vancouver Titans. Add a sixth player of any kind. Honestly, after all this Aspire drama, it might be in their best interest to not only get one, but two DPS. Replacing that hole at hitscan is not going to be easy, and I think that having two guys is going to better improve your odds of avoiding a major falloff. The DPS line has been the foundation of Vancouver. You've got to keep that alive, or your ship's going to end up sinking. Alternatively, if you find a solid DPS from NA contenders, let's say, who gets the job done, maybe you could get a tank player who specializes in the Winston in particular. Taking that burden off a of punk would be greatly beneficial for this team's performance, it would only increase their ceiling higher. The Titans in a lot of ways could improve their team, and I really would like to see them capitalize instead of stagnating, while a lot of their rivals try and get better. The Vegas Eternal. Before the recent roster changes, I'd say that this answer was pretty obvious. I'm glad they're attempting to make changes and they're trying to be more competitive, but at this point it is obviously way too late. They are so far behind the rest of the pack, and this feels like a band-aid to cover up a much more pressing matter. What I'd personally do to the Vegas Eternal is blow it all up. And I don't just mean the roster either. I'm talking the coaching, the management, everything needs to go. 
From all accounts, how this team is being handled is absolutely terrible. Management has been criticized time after time, and it's obvious that somebody new needs to take over and build back this franchise from the ground up. It's time for a mindset change. Start fresh and do a proper rebuild. If you like what you see from Dove or maybe a couple of the other new guys, you could keep them. Maybe you could try building your new core around them. But other than that, Vegas need to start fresh, plain and simple. The Washington Justice. It's time to get yourself a third support. Honestly, I think that making a change up at main support was a really good call. It's a great start. They recognized that it was a struggle and that it was probably in their best interest to change it, but that aspect of their team still feels maybe a little weak. It's the least glamorous aspect of their starting roster. Teru and Dunghoon kind of lacks that oomph factor, you know? Teru has proven to be a decent playmaker, but he's far from the top level guy that the Justice need, and this year I haven't really felt his presence as much as we did during the playoffs for the Spark. If they can add in, like, another flex support to give them that extra versatility, I think it could go a very long way. Having that extra guy for double flex comms or somebody who's maybe a bit more effective on the Ana is exactly what they need. Somebody that's a bit less aggressive and someone who's a bit more team-centric who can support Flora and Alpha Yi. The Justice are all about their DPS, and in my opinion, they're not giving them nearly enough resources. If the Justice embrace this kind of identity a little bit more, I think maybe there's a chance they could be even more dangerous and they could make a decent run come playoff time. I'm not saying it's going to solve all of their problems or if this is even realistic, but it could be a decent starting point. And honestly, you can apply that to any of the teams in this video, especially for the ones where I'm talking about their players and ways to maybe shake up their rosters. If I'm being honest with you, a lot of this stuff probably will not happen. In fact, for a bunch of teams, it's not even realistic. But in an ideal world, where it really doesn't matter, where logistics don't come into play, this is what I would do to change every OWL team here in the 2023 season. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give this video a like, comment down below what you change about these teams, and subscribe to the channel if you want more Overwatch League content. I've been ATP, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.